we are quite literally at war. Think about what is being pushed down your throat day in and day out. We're at war with those who claim to be serving us in the government. We're at war with the media. People will be more willing to let someone else fight their battles for them mm -hmm. than to fight battles themselves. We live in the best country still on the face of the earth where if you do have the work ethic and that intrinsic motivation, you can do amazing, remarkable things. I don't need a news organization to tell me what to think. I am willing and able to do my own due diligence, mm. but apparently being willing to do your own due diligence makes you a conspiracy theorist in the eyes of the mainstream media, which is really funny because whenever you are called a conspiracy theorist, usually you're proven right in about six to 12 months. If we're gonna turn America around, We've got to have some honest conversations. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show. I promise you, I am not getting my voice back. It's been insane this entire year. You know, I got a little vocal damage shy back in January. And I don't know, I got to go to like to an ENT or something like that. It, I, I got everything wrong with me. And it also gives me an opportunity to complain about it. But uh, I'm glad you guys are here. I want to encourage you to do a couple of things. One, make sure you're sharing these episodes when you have the opportunity to. Uh, rate us, review us. We deserve five stars wherever podcasts are offered. And then you can leave the review. Uh, say whatever you want to say, but it helps us. It definitely helps us. And sharing it is the biggest thing, man. We are throttled so bad on these various platforms. It's crazy. So when you get the opportunity, if you're ever on Facebook or you're on Instagram or you're on YouTube, just type my name, Chad Prather, in the search bar. See what pops up. See if you can refresh that algorithm a little bit. We're in a fight, folks. We're in a fight. And it's an election year. I don't have to tell you that. You know we're up against all kind of crazy stuff, and they're, they're wearing us out. And as you know, I'm out there on the road where you don't have algorithms. I can get face-to-face -face with you guys. So catch a live show. Uh, the schedule's at watchchad.com. I'm all over the place. And then if you haven't downloaded or even heard the new song, Famous Again, check it out, please. Uh, I think if you're following me on social media, you have to be living under a rock if you haven't heard the new song, Famous Again, because it's all I've been talking about. I love social media. As much as I want to say I hate it, I love it. I can't live without it. Don't know what to do. It's an addiction, and, and you guys don't want to admit it, but you know it's the truth. You're addicted, too. I mean, what would you do in the bathroom if you didn't have social media? You, you, you Remember the good old days we used to sit on the toilet and read the shampoo bottle, wait for the JCPenney catalog to come in, but nope, now we're on Facebook, Instagram, all the good stuff, TikTok reels. We just sit in there for hours. Our legs go to sleep. It's terrible. Here's the thing, though. The reason I love social media is because it made the world smaller. Hey, maybe that's not always a good thing, but man, it connects you to people and it gives you relationships that otherwise you would have never had. And so that's a beautiful thing if it's used right. Yeah, you open up the door to a whole lot of hate and garbage and trolls. And uh, as I told somebody the other day, it's just a Machiavellian complex of these narcissists trying to come after you because they look in the mirror and don't like what they see and therefore they got to hate on you. It's pure projection, but we live with it. But man, there's so many good friendships, relationships, and information that come out of social media. And one of the one of my favorite follows that I want you to follow is uh, is Damani Felder, the at the Damani Felder. And we're going to put the little deal down here at the bottom. He joins me here. Damani, how are you, man? I haven't seen you a couple years. Hey, it's been a while. Thanks for having me, Chad. I'm doing fantastic. I'll tell you what. Life is good in spite of what you know. individuals who are at odds with our missions and our goals uh, would throw in our faces. Yeah. So it's good to be here. Uh, we're going to continue to fight. We're going to continue to even leverage the enemy's own tools against them. And I look forward to continuing to join you in that effort moving forward. You've gotten lighter since I saw you last. I have. Uh, How much weight did you lose? I'm down 100 pounds. So okay. I went from... How? How? You know, I'll tell you what, uh, when you have a, a new child who's born, <laughs> that kind of is a good motivator for you to want to be around as long as possible. Um, as yeah. far as I'm concerned, too, just being active, uh, making that more intentional. One of the worst things about the last few years, as you know, is, you know, the stay home, save lives campaign. Be afraid of your fellow man. Be afraid to breathe oxygen. Be afraid to go outside. Don't <laughs> go to the gym. Stay home. Uh, watch whatever Netflix is serving up to you and just stay as sedentary as possible. Obviously, yeah. this is a time of action for our country. I think it's important that individuals do prioritize physical fitness because if the day comes where conflicts escalate, you have to be ready to protect yourself yeah. and to protect your loved ones. You know, my, my, my fitness journey at 51 years of age, it goes up and down. I'll go through six month phases where I'm all about it. I'm in the gym, I'm working out, I'm, I'm working on me, I'm eating right. And then, you know, you hurt your back and, and you, you become a lazy slob again. <laughs> it's easy for me to do. You just kind of want to go into that lethargic state. You know, I'm at rest. That's my, that's where I want to be. Uh, but we were in the airport. We had a quick connection in Atlanta a few months ago, 
and uh, we, we had to just haul through there. We had to get after it. And I had my guitar on my back and my whole thing, and I, and I start to run, and I was like, I can do this for maybe seven steps. Yeah. Like, it was just, I was like, oh, my gosh, what has <laughs> happened to me? You know, it, it's just, you just let it go. But I think you're right. We're at, I mean, we never know what's coming down the line, yeah. right? I mean, it could be crisis. I mean, you know, what was it? The, the, a bridge collapses when yeah. a boat runs into it. You never know what yeah. kind of chaos or crisis you could be in. So I agree with you on that, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, one of the things, too, that I strongly advocate is just being able to be as self-reliant as possible. Yeah. Uh, one of the hardest lessons a lot of individuals learn over the past several years was if you are putting all of your faith and hope and trust in any elected official, mm -hmm. you're coming at it sideways already. Yeah. Because these individuals, they will dictate what you can or can't do, where you can and can't go, where you can and can't shop, if you can eat at a restaurant or any of those things. So the more self-reliant individuals are, the better. And I think that starts with being as physically fit as you possibly can. And it, I obviously understand people have constraints. Uh, life is busy. Life is difficult. Yeah. Far uh, the vast majority, I should say, of individuals yeah. out there have a full-time job. You know, they're managing a kid's schedules and whatnot. So sometimes exercise can take a back seat, but it's something that I've had a renewed interest in and definitely intend to continue in the future. That ring you got on your left hand, hold that thing up to that <laughs> camera right there. Look at that thing. Right Give here. him a shot of that sucker right there. Yep. Look at that big rock right there. That's Texas A&M, so, baby. Yep, Texas A&M in the house. I'm a fighting Texas Aggie class of 2014. Uh, I was a walk-on linebacker for Texas A&M University through the 2010 through 2011 season. Uh, back then, I thought the path for my life was to become a football star. Yeah. And I had aspirations of playing in the Canadian uh, Football League or the NFL, but God said differently. And yeah. he said, no, I want you to become active politically, to use the voice I gave you for good. How did uh, you respond to that? Like when, when, you, when you felt that urge to go that direction, did you fight it or was it cool with you? At first, I'm not going to lie, I did fight it a bit. There was a little bit of resentment, I should say, because that was what I thought my dreams were. That was what I thought yeah. my passion was going to lead into. But evidently, God is in control. He always knows better than we do. So having the ability to start stepping out and realizing my voice, finding my voice, and then having it amplified to the level where I'm at now on social media, it's a blessing, a testament to God's plan, and I intend to continue using that voice for good. Yeah. You, you heard what I said about social media. What do you think? You think it's good, evil, both? How do you feel about that? <laughs> you know, I was talking with a friend recently, and I was telling him social media more or less is a net negative right? Yeah, on right. society because right. it, it allows individuals to hide behind anonymity most of the time. Uh, people will levy bad faith attacks against you, impugn yeah. your character, uh, threaten yourself, threaten your loved ones, even um, threaten your own life. Yeah, uh, It has been a force for good, though, even in spite of the censorship efforts that many social media platforms have been engaged in. Mm. Uh, I'm encouraged that even now, in spite of all of the <sighs> the methods and tactics that they've used, these social media companies— there are still individuals out there like yourself, like myself, like many others who mm. refuse to allow that to cow us into a state of silence and submission, yeah. because that's the ultimate goal. If they're throttling your content by 90 percent, 95 percent, of course, the intent is that, oh, well, maybe this person will just shut up and go away. And we're at a time now where we have to speak even more loudly than ever before. The silent majority was one of the catchphrases of 2016. That silent majority needs to become much more raucous and match the level of energy and effort that we frequently see from the other side of the aisle. So I use it as best I can. I also yeah. have to remember that social media is not real life, you know, and True. it's not the end of the world. If my platforms were taken down tomorrow, you know, I would still be secure and confident in who I am and whose I am and uh, continue to engage, particularly at the local level. So uh, I'm glad, though, that there are individuals who are still able to use this platform for good, and I'm here with you for as long as our platforms are allowed to exist. Yeah, I encourage people like all the time. I'm like, go in there, type Damani Felder in your search engine, and just wake that algorithm up and yep. just remind, you remind the, the big tech overlords that, hey, we're here, we want to hear what he has to say, because they, it's so throttled, man. It, it, it's so bad, but you're right when you say net negative. I keep saying it's the end of civilization as we know it, right? I mean, we're entertaining ourselves to death, honestly, because it's it's destroyed a lot of relationships. It's destroyed marriages. It's destroyed, um, you know, families. There's so many things that have that are horrible that come out of there. There's tons of misinformation. There's no doubt about it. Yep. But I think it's our responsibility to weed through that. I mean, as as mature adults with critical thinking skills, which I think we've lost in many ways, 100%. to be able to say, you know, hey, listen, I don't need Mark Zuckerberg telling me what I can and can't read. Yep. 
Uh, and so, I, you know, I and mean, I still don't know what to think of the whole Twitter slash X thing. I just keep putting stuff on there. I, you know, I got, I don't know, 400 something thousand followers on that thing. I probably half of them are bots. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know how any of that stuff works, yeah. you know? Hey guys, let's take a quick break in the show and uh, let's talk about my friends over at Patriot Mobile. You know, for 10 years, they have been America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. And when I say the only one, trust me, they are the only one. Another thing about them is they've been a partner of this show for a long time, and they're very good personal friends. I love these guys. I know their values, and they're just good people, and I'm happy that they partnered with this show. I'm so proud of them. Patriot Mobile has offered uh, dependable nationwide coverage for a long time, but they give you the ability to access all three major networks now, so you do not have to worry about ever getting out from under a coverage area. You've grown accustomed to having it, so you might as well keep it. But here's the deal with Patriot Mobile. You don't have to fund the left or their causes because with the big three, if you pay your bill with them, guess what? They're going to fund things that you don't believe in. It's a fact. It's true. Check it out. Do your research. So when you switch to Patriot Mobile, you're sending a message that you support with your hard earned dollars. You support free speech, the Second Amendment, religious freedom, the uh, sanctity of life. You're going to honor military veterans and um, our first responder heroes. They got 100% U.S. based. Uh, the customer service team that's going to make switching easy. You can keep your number, keep your phone, or you can upgrade. They'll help you. Switching is easy, and their team will even help you find the best plan that fits you and your family's needs. You can go to uh, PatriotMobile.com. That's PatriotMobile.com. Don't forget to add slash Chad on the end of it. Or you can call them on the phone, 972-PATRIOT. You get free activation with promo code C-H-A-D. I spell it, Chad. Join me, make the switch today, patriotmobile.com slash chat. That's patriotmobile.com slash chat or call 972 Patriot. People will view social media, especially if you're on the right side of the aisle. We're aware of the, the subterfuge that a lot of the social media yeah. companies are engaged in. But I stop short of saying that individuals should jump off it completely because then you are ceding ground to the other right. side ideologically. It's important that we are still able to speak out on these platforms and utilize our voices in whatever capacity we can for good, because if we don't, we run the risk of forfeiting the minds of especially the younger generation. There's yeah. individuals out there who are on TikTok, individuals who are on Facebook. And while, yes, we're aware that Zuckerberg and TikTok in general, they will do what they can to support the ideologies with which they're in line, which largely um, are in line with the Democrat Party. Mm. But they also have to realize that there's individuals on our side who are going to be able to find a way to utilize their own tools and methods against them so that we can cut through the noise and actually reach individuals with the truth. If we don't do that, then we've already lost the country. And I would argue we've already digitally lost or ceded our First Amendment rights. And that's something that we simply can't allow to happen. Yeah, a minute ago, you were talking about how, you know, you, you just want to take care of yourself and be self-sufficient. You want to be healthy and fit and those kind of things. Do, do, you know, I've been kind of reading a lot lately about how like, why, why are our cities in America blue, right? Why, why are our urban areas blue? This is some of the just temporary and, and just peripheral conclusions I've come to from 30,000 feet in the air is that people, people that live in the cities, they're, they're used to being dependent on a real intertwined either government dependence or they live on top of each other. Mm -hmm. And so they're all part of a housing association or an HOA or, you know, they they got bylaws in a building they rent, I, you know, and so all of these different things. So they're used to being intertwined like that. Then you got folks like us and you've lived in the city. I've lived in the city. I've lived in the country. Then you got folks that are, that tend to be a little bit further away from the city. They're like, well, we're a little more self-sufficient, right? Yep. You know, what do you think that's the difference between, between the, the right and the left in terms of the right just really at the end of the day, just wants to be left alone versus the left, which wants to be more, intertwined and dependent in that regard? Yeah, I would say what the left has done is they've mastered the art of creating the illusion of community mm. because they have these God, that's catchy, profound. They have these catchy slogans yeah. and they say, oh, you are welcome here. We will love you and accept oh, yeah. you. And we know all too often their actions indicate that their ideals are the antithesis of such that they proclaim. But individuals on the right side of the aisle, more often than not, we don't want individuals telling us what to do. It truly is the spirit and essence yeah. of the 1776 movement uh, that we all are well aware of as a bunch of young men who chose to take matters into their own hands and say, we don't want to be told what to do by the powers that be. We believe that our rights are given to us by God, not by yeah. the government. Therefore, we are going to do everything in our power to obviously honor God but to also make sure that we aren't viewing ourselves as reliant or dependent upon the nanny state. Right. 
the state of America today, unfortunately, as individuals, especially in these past few years, they began to look to government to give them the answers and the solutions, instead of looking within and looking above. And if you're looking to the government to dictate what you can and can't do, they will always find a way to wrest power away from you, mm -hmm. and then they are loath to give that power back. And there's a, a real a spirit of fecklessness is the best way to put it. And individuals are so pusillanimous now that they're not going right. to rise up and take matters into their own hands, obviously peacefully and, um, and professionally, I should say, but people will be more willing to let someone else fight their battles for them mm. than to fight battles themselves. And that's the status quo that's simply untenable and can't be allowed to continue. Yeah, I mean, that, that little segment right there, what you just said, needs to be played on repeat over and over and over again. Um, that's, that's incredible. The illusion created the illusion of community. That's so true. Um, God, there's so many examples that come to my head when you say that. Like, for instance, when Ron DeSantis sent those illegals to Martha's Vineyard and they pretended to love them so much for 36 hours. Yep. And then they put them on a bus and sent them out, right? Yep. It was okay until it was there. Like, I, I keep saying that everybody's everybody's uh, progressive until progressivism comes to their house. You know, and you see those yard signs out there, you know, the yeah. science is real, Black Lives Matter, no human being is illegal. But you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who actually lives that out in real life. True. Because when you are being inundated with millions upon millions of illegal immigrants, they have to go somewhere invariably. And we're already seeing a lot of the blue cities that said, oh, you're welcome here. They're being overloaded and they're so beleaguered that they are offloading their illegal immigrant population now to other areas. Yeah. And they are expecting individuals to take them into their homes and treat them as their own, which, of course, no logical, sane thinking person would do. <laughs> right. There is, I believe, up in New England uh, recently, I saw an article and there was a a, a liberal woman up there and she was being asked how she felt about the, you know, having the illegal immigrants around and if you're going to let some into their house. And she was so pleased to uh, tell the camera that she was happy because it's almost like, you know, you have a, a live in chef with you. <laughs> yeah. And these people don't understand that, that the, their own covert bigotry as it relates to individuals who might come from disadvantaged areas, but right. they view them as a means to an end. Mm -hmm. They view them as a commodity instead of as people. They don't want to fix the actual problem. And now we're even seeing outbreaks of things like the measles mm -hmm. occurring in places like Illinois because, you know, individuals want people to come here. Oh, if you say anything negative about the illegal immigrants and the fact that they might have some diseases that we don't want here in America, that's not true. They actually help, uh, you know, the, the overall health state of the country. And then yeah. a few years later, the same news media organizations and outlets are now saying, oh, there's a measles outbreak here, there's an outbreak of this there, smallpox here, and so on and so forth. And there's real consequences to these actions. Yeah. It's really easy to sit there and say, oh my gosh, I want to take care of everyone. Every uh, Everyone needs to be loved and accepted. But when that bill comes due, and make no mistake, it will come due, there are consequences that all too often, not just the people who promoted these policies, but individuals who were against those policies also have to suffer under, and we're seeing that happen today. Man, that's the truth. I, you know, I, Geraldo Rivera came out the, the other day with a tweet about that bridge collapse, and he talked about, uh, I think there were eight men who were on the bridge. They were workers, and uh, he made the comment about them being undocumented, and six of them, you know, and, and he was like, they were doing a job that no American wants to do. And it was all this BS that he was saying. And, um, and uh, Joe Paggs, he, he went after him. Uh, I loved his response to it, just saying, you know, one, it's offensive that you're saying that, that we're celebrating that these men died, mm -hmm. uh, and you don't know that they're undocumented. If they are undocumented, who hired them? Why would they be hired? Uh, but but just that idea, like you said, the low key bigotry of saying, oh, they're doing a job nobody, no American wants to do. Right. I've heard that out of the left so many different times. I yep. mean, Nancy Pelosi said, you know, we've got to get them up here because the climate change has made it where they can't, uh, they don't have fields to plow anymore. Yep. So they got to come up here and find fields to plow. I'm like, yep. I mean, what are we doing? Instituting uh, slavery again? Yep. I mean, do we need somebody up here picking cotton? I mean, that's 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 what she's saying it's, in essence. It's Somebody's got to come work the fields. It certainly ap appears that way. And there's been other individuals beyond Nancy Pelosi who have made comments like, oh, well, who's going to pick our crops? Who's yeah. going to this or that? Uh, you know, who's going to clean our, our toilets? These kinds of comments obviously should be viewed as reprehensible by the same virtue signaling individuals right. who are advocating for these policies. But they're too busy trying to play a game of optics. Mm. And honestly, politics has become more or less just a, a theatrical 
uh, exploit at this point. Everyone wants to posture and say all the right things. But when it comes time to take action, many of these same individuals, you know, they're living in their gated communities. Mm -hmm. They're not the ones who are going to have to uh, reap the benefits of or the <laughs> lack of benefits that they sow as it yeah. relates to this ongoing issue. But it's because they want to appear altruistic. But I would argue there's a much more insidious underbelly to it. And what I mean by that is these politicians who advocate for open borders and for illegal immigrants to come in and who uh, offend those illegal immigrants by saying that they should be, you know, in the service industry indefinitely, what they're doing is they are importing a victim class, yeah. a permanent victim class. They've done this before with other minority groups. They've done this with African-American individuals, mm -hmm. where they consistently are able to portray themselves as, oh, we are the loving individuals. We're here to help you. And the question is, over and over and over again, every two years or four years or six years when they're running for office, why is it that the same communities always seem to need help from the same people? Yeah. If these politicians truly meant what they said, then problems would have been solved. But let's face it, solving problems isn't sexy in the political realm. You have to stake your career on having an indefinite laundry list of things to fix so you have something to do. Yeah. And we're seeing that happen with a lot of these individuals who are elected, and then they themselves, they run from one issue to the next to the next, never adequately solving the issues that they were championing a few minutes ago. Dude. And we see ourselves running on this hamster wheel indefinitely. That, you're dropping truth bombs. Hey guys, you know, we've spent a lot of time in recent years talking about our health, whether it was COVID or vaccines and all the stuff connected to it. So between the virus and the vaxes and whether you're jammed or not, most of us have these toxins already residing inside our bodies like a ticking time bomb just waiting to blow. Well, I want to share with you a simple solution that will help you and your family, and that's with Warrior Essentials. Their patent pending formula has evolved into the most powerful way to help your body heal itself. It will turn on your God given defenses for a strong and healthy body. Warrior Essentials is not a drug, but it uses targeted nutrition to work with your body's natural defenses. It'll remove toxins, repair circulatory health, it'll restore your epigenome. Today, we're going to be able to share with you a special offer for the Prather Posse if you go to recoverwithchad.com. You got to do it now. Go to recoverwithchad.com and save up to 50% off regular prices plus free shipping. Help your body get rid of the toxic spike proteins and boost your health. Listen, can't save our country if we die suddenly. So recoverwithchad.com. That's recoverwithchad.com for up to 50% off and free shipping. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. The the the, the laundry list that you're talking about, the, the what was it? How'd you phrase that? They keep creating or the problems. They always have to have a problem to fix. And I, my my issue there is they've created so many problems now. It's gotten out of control. Yep. I mean, it's one thing to keep creating problems and say, okay, we need to work on this, we need to work on this, we need to work. But now they're literally actively, proactively creating problems yep. that is like, you know, manufacturing oppression, manufacturing victims. What was it? So Joe Biden comes out and on Easter, you know, weekend, he comes out and says, we're going to, March 31st, going to be Transgender Visibility Day. Yeah. And everybody pushed back and said, well, it's always been March 31st. Well, if it's always been this accepted thing why did he need to take an executive decree and put it out yeah. on good friday or whenever he did it and i was sitting there going you know in a in a world in a country where we have free and fair elections you wouldn't offend 85 percent of the population no. by putting that out there <laughs> absolutely not but yet he did it it, it created and it created more of an issue now everybody's saying oh well see we, now you guys are just a bunch of bigots and it's like it's not, I mean, you want visibility? You're the most visible people in America right now. Right. I mean, you represent less than 1% of our population, and it's all anybody's talking about. Ask Anheuser Bush. Mm -hmm. yep. you, made that, you made that one dude pretty visible, <laughs> and you see what happened. You know, that was intentional. Everyone sure. who's aware knows that. I mean, individu some individuals may not be aware that, you know, Easter Sunday, it's a holiday that does move on the calendar, and I think right. it's the first Sunday after the first uh, full moon uh, on or after the vernal or spring equinox, right? right? So that date has always moved around. But be that as it may, and be that as it may that, you know, the transgender day of visibility has always been on March 31st, you have to read the room. 
mm. politically. If there's individuals that you actively want to court, I mean, in the next few months, we're going to see Joe Biden go into black churches, inner city areas. We're going to see him go to Hispanic churches and uh, try to present himself as this individual he claims and purports to be Catholic himself. Yeah. So you can't speak out of both sides of your mouth. And the Bible says that if you're lukewarm, God will spit you out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. So we, we can't make overtures to one faction and then not make the same overtures to the other faction. Part of the, probably one of the more offensive things, even beyond the, the Easter kerfuffle, was the issue that uh, purportedly or allegedly uh, there were individuals or children who were going to be at an Easter egg event and they were banned mm -hmm. from placing religious symbols on these Easter eggs. Yeah. What message does that send? So it, it becomes a game of pandering. And politics is inherently going to be a game of pandering to one side or the other. But you have to understand, especially if you want to attract so many more voters to your party, especially in this election year, yeah. you have to understand how to walk a line or toe a line or say, maybe I shouldn't make this post. Maybe I shouldn't tweet this on this day, <laughs> knowing that, you know, I'm going to be potentially trying to attract individuals who are evangelicals. And we can talk about whether or not you can be a Christian and in good faith vote for a left-leaning ideology until the cows come home. But the fact remains that these individuals on the left you know, last Easter, they had, remember, the, the topless influencers on the White House lawn for Yeah, they were showing their moves. So I'm almost like, are, are they trying to outdo themselves year after year? If you are, please stop. Like, we don't want that. <laughs> just, just do what you've always done, which unfortunately is very little in the eyes of the average everyday American. Yeah. And try to do more to get individuals to say, OK, yeah, you are doing a good job because right now Joe Biden's approval rating is underwater. And that's because the average individual is having to spend 200 bucks per week at the grocery store now because insurance premiums, mortgage rates are continuing to rise. And no effort is being allocated towards that comparatively to the, you know, the illegal immigrant issue or situation and we've got the our country's giving hundreds of billions of dollars away to ukraine and we can't seem to get that ukraine monkey off our back <laughs> I so never will. Like, it, but it, can you imagine how much we could have done for the average everyday american if Insane. you took the amount of money we sent to ukraine and divided it or portioned it out to every american citizen? In, insane you know i have the app the debt clock right the u.s mm -hmm. debt clock and it's so depressing when you open this thing up so at the time of this taping, and it is, you see that number just going steadily up, steadily oh, yeah. up, steadily up. So we're $34,617,000,000,000 in debt. Yep. That, that's not going away. That, that's, that's not, you know, uh, every person, uh, every person in this country owes $102,894. Yep. Uh, every taxpayer owes $267,000 right mm -hmm. now. So, I mean, there's no way you, that you can't sustain something like that. But then you're going to come off and, and either and either make I mean, in the first 20 seconds, the first 25 seconds of the State of the Union, he started talking about Ukraine, mm -hmm. how we've got to. I mean, this is a Ukraine first president. Yeah. You know, so uh, the country can't stand. You know it, it can't st it can't stick around like this. You know, what's funny, too, is that the country is so consistently financially, fiscally irresponsible. Mm hmm. We see the debt clock running up, and it, it just looks like almost like you know a, a lottery uh, game or whatnot. But they have the uh, audacity to give you a credit score, yeah, and they try to tell you, oh, you owe the government this much money. If anyone out there is listening, if you take one thing away from this, I'll tell you this: we just you know, we're right around tax season right now. Utilize the tax code, familiarize yourself with the tax code, and figure out how you can keep as much of your money as possible because the government's going to use your money as an interest-free loan, and they're going to funnel that away to their own passion projects, unrelated things that have nothing to do with you and keeping your country mm -hmm. safe. So it's incumbent upon you to figure out how am I going to use the tax code to my advantage. If that means that you start up a side hustle or something like that, do that. If that means that you become a, a gig economy worker, figure out how you are going to retain as much money as you possibly can. Because if you don't, the government is standing right there and they're all too happy to funnel that money away and then have the nerve to call it a refund when they give back money that they took and stole from you and held without interest for an entire year. You said something the other day. It was on your Instagram. Um, I think you tweeted it, too, but I, I saw it. And, and this is something that it, it, basically in summary, you said taxation is theft. Mm -hmm. And it is. It is 100%. Like you said, they're going to take an interest-free loan. They're going to use it for whatever they want to do. And you have no say in the matter. 
And people say, well, what about the roads and the post office? And I, I promise you, and I've said this for years and years, if, if you get out there and the roads get bumpy enough, there's somebody in, in, in the world who will figure out how to make those roads flat. Yep. They'll figure out how to do it. Yep. But I can't imagine, you know, back to a point we were talking about a minute ago. I was sitting there, you know, over Easter weekend, and I was thinking, can you imagine George Washington or John Adams or Thomas Jefferson issuing an executive order for a transgender day of visibility? <laughs> and, and I get it, you know, times have changed. Okay, but, but yeah, but I'll tell you, times may change, governments may change, uh, countries may change, values may change, but I'll tell you, people are always the same. Yeah. People are always the same. Yeah. There are always folks out there with those sinful desires and pursuits and things like that. The issue, the difference between then and now is now we're entertaining it. Mm -hmm. We're entertaining people's sin. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and you, can't, you can't continue under the providential hand of God. You can't be blessed if you're going to just keep thumbing your nose at God. 100%. You know, and that's where we're living. You know, think about it, too. Back when America was being founded, when the founding fathers were devising what this country uh, should be, mm -hmm. The issues back then were not the issues that they are now. What I mean by that is back then, your main goal was to figure out how can I build a home, use my hands to protect my family from the elements? How can I become a better hunter so I can feed my family? All these things. These were working men and women back at that point in time. Yeah. Now we live in such a, a hedonistic, decadent, honestly disconnected society that individuals out there have to honestly make up oppression sometimes yeah. and we've seen that happen we know there's different hoaxes that people come out with trying to create the illusion of oppression but if your life is so hard that you have to worry about oh what does someone think is someone using the right language as it pertains to me that is not the issue that 95 percent of the rest of the world the developing world mm -hmm. has to contend with they are worried about taking care of those basic needs like Maslow's hierarchy of needs you don't need a couple things that you absolutely have to have yeah and in many parts of the world people are focused on how do I survive while here in America there's all too often people who are saying well how can I be made more comfortable and I would say that's probably the most obvious harbinger of what possibly could come mm -hmm. uh, for this country is you know there's a quote that says uh, strong men create good times good times create weak men weak men create hard times we're in the weak men create hard times portion right yeah. now and that's because we lived for so long and we had individuals who worked so hard for us to provide for us that now you have an entire generation or multiple generations now that feel as if the struggles that their parents or grandparents went through, that those don't have to be their own. I want what my parents worked 30 years for right now when I graduate from college. Yeah. And, you know, if you even look at people who are going into the workforce now, we've got uh, Gen Z uh, going into the workforce now, and you'll hear from hiring managers all the time, you know, it's hard for us to retain talent because these kids, they want a 10-minute break every 30 minutes, you know, and they don't have any concept of how to respect authority, don't have any concept of how to be productive and how to be yeah. diligent. And what does that portend for the future of the country? If we have an entire generation of individuals who are being phased out, the hardest workers, the baby boomers, and they're being replaced with individuals who want to be coddled and catered to. They want a little snack bar in their <laughs> office and all this stuff that doesn't matter. We are on the brink and the precipice. And sometimes you hear that rhetoric come out every election cycle. Oh, this is the most important election. Any election henceforth and forevermore that we have this mentality of entitlement is the most consequential election. Because it's really easy to say, oh, I want you to give me something for free, mm -hmm. but don't realize that that bill's going to come due, and you won't even realize by half the time you're footing that bill yourself. Man, that's a mouthful, and it's true. It's scary. Um, I, I've said that about the church for a long time, is people are more concerned with the fountains out front and the, and the architecture and the coffee in the lobby than they are the truth that's coming out of the, out of the, you know, the pulpit. Uh, but that's true in, in our country as well. People want to be coddled. They, they want to be comfortable. Um, I mean, look at this trend of everybody, their, their, their professional pursuits is to be a social media influencer, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, I, and I, you know, I fell into social media following. I, I didn't intend for that to happen. I was just having fun on social media, and boom, the thing blew up. I, was, I had my own career going. I had my own stuff going, and then, you know, it just kind of fell into it. But I've worked real hard to create businesses out of that, 
And it's like people say, well, you just sit around and talk and you podcast and you waste your time and all that, blah, blah, blah. You just run your mouth for a living. I'm like, yeah, but you don't know how hard I've worked to be able to do that. Yeah. Because there's millions of podcasts out there. It don't mean people are making a living off of it right. or anything. So it's like you, you have to work hard to do that. And when I graduated college, you know, I'm Gen X. So my parents were boomers, baby boomers, actual boomers, uh, unlike what they accuse us uh, all of being these days. Uh, if you have any any traditional values, you're a boomer these <laughs> days. But, you know, I noticed that Gen X, that people in my generation, when they were graduating college, they wanted to immediately be making what, as you said, their parents had been making yep. and that they worked 30 years to get to, right? Mm -hmm. They wanted to have that. And there was a disenchantment if they didn't receive that. There was a little bit of a bitterness. And then on the flip side of that, Gen Xers started having, what, millennials? And, and we, wanted, we wanted our kids to have everything. Mm -hmm. They didn't do chores. They, they, you know, they, they, we just coddled them. Right. We, they, we immediately started giving them stuff, you yep. know? And they didn't have to earn anything. And then they started having kids, and now everything is Amazon.com. I mean, I got a buddy of mine who just had another baby, and he goes, dude, I can't come in my front door every day because of the Amazon packages <laughs> that either my wife's ordering. He's young. He goes, either my wife's ordering or somebody's sending us stuff. And I'm like, you guys got things that rock the baby for you. You got monitors. You can watch them on TV. You don't yeah. let them cry. I mean, these kids are breastfeeding until they're 17. <laughs> I mean, we're, they're spoiled rotten, Damani. And, and it's like... What are we doing as a culture? Nobody's never gotten a blister. Yeah. There's no calluses, right? Yeah. And you know, as an athlete, as a, as a as a as a elite athlete, uh, you you got to put in the work at some point in time to get the reward. They don't just hand out those rings to everybody no. that enrolls at Texas A and M. Yeah, work ethic is something that was passed down by previous generations, but yeah. it was not adhered to by current and will not be adhered to it appears by future generations yeah uh, when you live in a society where everything <laughs> is so easy for you to attain yeah you inherently devalue that what you're attaining in the first place yeah we can tie that into even college education there's so much talk about student loan forgiveness okay let's just say hypothetically everyone's student loan debt is magically canceled okay essentially what you are in effect saying is that that time effort energy and money that you invested into yourself to become a better person who is able to better provide for yourself or for your family okay we're just going to say that it doesn't really matter okay yeah we're just going to give it to you for free then what's that going to do to individuals out there who have a bachelor's degree? All of a sudden, yeah. that bachelor's degree has been diluted. Yeah, so it's, it's high school 2.0. Exactly. And now you're going to be upset if they do <laughs> enact student loan forgiveness, which we know they never will, but it's a really good election. Dangle, dangles that carrot. Mm -hmm. yep. If that happens, then you're going to have individuals. The next grievance will be, I can't get a good paying job now. Oh, hmm, I wonder why that is. Well, it's because everyone now seems to have a bachelor's degree because there's no barrier to entry or there's no motivation for you to actually try to excel or be better where than where you were yeah and then everyone's gonna have a bachelor's degree and we're gonna be in the same situation okay i guess we need more universal basic income now please cut me a check government please daddy government take care of me and which was never what the founding fathers intended right i despise it like when jamal bowman came out talking about we were going to spend our way into reparations with 14 trillion dollars and it's like dude that that's that doesn't i mean you're just making up a whole other economic system in a fantasy land yep I, I, it's weird. You know, and, you know, let's talk about that for a minute, reparations and whatnot. Another dangling carrot. There's, there's, it's a really easy carrot, like you said, to dangle in front of certain yeah. groups of people. But the thing is, anyone alive today who is of working age yeah. never had to experience the outright slavery that they are clamoring for reparations from. Right. So the thing is, who gets reparations? Let's actually unpack this. Let's say you're half black, half white. Does the government cut you a check for a half of that amount? <laughs> Let's say you're a quarter. You, you can go on and find out your genealogy. I'm 2% black, so please, government, can I get 2% of the rep? It doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> but these are a group of people who are perpetually aggrieved, and they've been yeah. uh, turned into more or less vassals for whatever the latest Democrat talking point is. Yeah. Oh, we want to give you money because your ancestors were, were slaves and this and that. You know what? You know how many black only or Hispanic only or Pacific Islander only scholarships there are out there for higher education? Right. Why aren't we investing more resources into helping steer maybe underprivileged, under uh, disadvantaged students to these resources yeah. instead of saying, we're going to cut you a check because you know what's going to happen when that check gets cut if it ever does get cut is because our failing education system 
doesn't even pretend to try to teach any sort of fiscal responsibility. Right. You're going to get a bunch of people who are going out, buying all this flashy stuff or racking up more credit card debt. And then guess what? They'll be back at square one probably in just a couple years, if that, because they never were taught how to rise from that station in life and become more financially adroit. So be, because that is the status quo, mm -hmm. you can't just simply throw money at a problem indefinitely yeah. and assume it's going to solve any problems. And the best example of that is, you know, what we're doing over there in Ukraine. And, you know, we throw all this money over there and Russia is still reigning victorious over yeah, there. It's a black and hole. It's, it's something that's going to continue unless we start real, helping people realize you don't need anything other than yourself. Mm. That's a good if word. you have intrinsic motivation, yeah. if you have aspiration, if you have a vision for what you want your future to look like, we live in the best country still on the face of the earth where if you do have the work ethic mm. and that intrinsic motivation, you can do amazing, remarkable things. And it's foolish to sit there and claim that this country is inherently and irredeemably racist when you're hearing that message coming from individuals like the Don Lemons of the world, coming from individuals like the Oprah Winfrey's of the world, the, even the Dwayne The Rock Johnson's, all these individuals, Charles Barkley even, who claims he wants to punch individuals, you know, in the face uh, yeah. on occasion. Yeah. Zeke Arkham put a, put a stop to that. <laughs> he did. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent. If you're watching this, Zeke, you are the man. But no, yeah. they, we have this group of people who are hearing this message and they don't even realize that the mouthpieces of this message are the antithesis and contradiction to the very message they are espousing. Yeah. So until individuals have that moment of awakening where they say, okay, I'm being taken for a ride here. I'm being manipulated. Mm. Nothing's going to change. But I'll say this, individuals like being manipulated. They like being told what to think. Mm. All too often here in 2024, you've got news articles that will come out. Mm. Thus and such happened. Here's what you need to know. Yeah. I don't need a news organization to tell me what to think or tell me what they think the facts are that I should be aware of. I am willing and able to do my own due diligence, mm. but apparently being willing to do your own due diligence makes you a conspiracy theorist in the eyes of the mainstream media, which is really funny because whenever you are called a conspiracy theorist, usually you're proven right in about six to 12 months, yeah, if not faster. It comes out. Yep. It comes out. All right, you got to go. You got to go. I, I'm going to continue on with the audience here a little bit, but I'm going to close out with you here for a second. Um, you know, dude, you're a neighbor now, so you can't be a stranger. All right, <laughs> absolutely. You, you and I live, I don't know, 20 minutes from each other. Yep. So let's connect and do this again. Let's keep this conversation going because you you drop some bombs on this thing. <laughs> And uh, I hate that you got to run, but I know you're busy and you got a lot of stuff going on. And man, I appreciate you. I really do. I appreciate your voice. I know you've been through some hard stuff recently with yeah. the attacks yeah. that come. And I have, and, you know, but you know, God didn't promise us an easy life. Right. And I consider it an honor. I count it all joy yeah. when individuals come after God's people, because in the end, we know who wins. Yeah. I'm so grateful to you for having me on. I definitely would love to come back again. You're coming you back me. sooner than later. Uh, anybody out there who, who's uh, interested, you know, I'm not just on uh, X or Twitter. You can find me on Instagram at the Demani Felder. Mm -hmm. You can find me on YouTube at the Wright Brothers. I am on Rumble. I'm on Telegram. I'm even on TikTok of all places because we have to use our voices for good, no matter what platform it is if we hope to turn the tide for this country and for the rest of the world. So, you know, Damani is, uh, you, you, you run into people every now and then who just have made themselves truth seekers, right? Um, and I think this is the first time we've ever had a, a podcast episode in over a thousand episodes where somebody used the word pusillanimous. So obviously we're dealing with a dude who uh, is well-read, well-educated, and more importantly uh, has has put a lot of thought into things that he's saying. And there's so much truth wrapped up in, in, in all of that. And, you know, we're living in a day and age where the attacks are going to get heavier and heavier. He didn't go into it a lot, and I'm not going to tell you the details, but he, he has been under a lot of attack from, you know, different folks on the left. And it's just for nothing else but speaking the truth and, and telling people. You know, I, you, you have all these folks out there, everybody from Oprah to whatever talking head that says you got to speak your truth until your truth doesn't agree. They don't agree with your truth. And then you get persecuted. They'll come after your job. They'll come after your platform. They'll come after your money, your livelihood. They'll come after your family. Uh, this disgusting tactics. And, and anybody engaged in that is subhuman, in my opinion. 
if you really if you really want a free fair society a, a society in which people can speak their mind they can dialogue debate disagree and then ultimately come back together on on their values well if you really want that you have to be willing to hear some things you don't agree with now the the issue in this country right now is we're like a bunch of 5 year olds pointing at each other saying you're wrong no you're wrong at some stage in the game, the adults have to enter the chat, okay? And alluding back to what Damani and I were talking about, when you have these different groups out there, whether it's illegals coming across the border or a transgender day of visibility or various uh, subset of society, this small fraction of community or, or minority groups or whoever it may be, when, whenever you keep focusing on all, all of these things. And, and yeah, I have empathy. I do. I have empathy for people coming across the border. I have people, I have empathy for people who are dealing with, with their issues in terms of their sexuality or their gender or not feeling at home in their own body or comfortable in their own skin. And so they have a dysphoria going on. I have empathy for people who are genuinely dealing with that. But, but when you have politicians that keep creating, um, a, creating a catharsis that you have to discuss or disagree on or or talk about and they're focusing on these things rather than the betterment of the greater good and the greater whole of American society we're going to keep producing those five-year-olds that are playing the finger pointing game so at some stage in the in, in this whole deal if we're going to turn America around we've got to have some honest conversations we've got to have some critical thinking We've got to be willing to listen to some things that move us outside of our box and have a little more understanding. Now, I'm not telling you to, to pander. I'm not telling you to, to bow down to ideologies or narratives or even agendas that violate your values or traditional thought or your convictions or your faith. I would never tell you to do that. I don't want you to do that. I want you to stand boldly and proclaim the things that you believe and shout your convictions from the rooftop. Uh, but I want us to listen. I do want us to listen to what's being said because so many of these things, if you, if you just think about what is being pushed down your throat day in and day out, you'll see that we're, we are quite, quite literally at war. We're at war with those who claim to be serving us in the government. We're at war with the media. We're at war with so many powerful forces that are out there. So, you know, I appreciate guys like Damani. I appreciate his voice and, and so many of these other guys that I'm trying to bring to you on this program so that you can hear more conversations. And I hate that he had to leave so early, Shy. I really do. I, I, wanted, I wanted to get into so much more on that. But, man, the truth bombs that were dropped in this episode, you need to go back and watch them again. I'm going to. Uh, because I want to, I want to rehearse some of the things that he said. He'll hear me quoting these things eventually. Uh, I'll pretend like I said them. You know, I'll just pretend like they, I made them my own. But it, it'll, be, you'll know it came from Damani. But, but, but be that person that absorbs truth. Be that person that seeks the truth and pursues it and thinks through these things. Because the children, the children are running the the preschool at this point. The children are running the daycare, and we can't allow that to happen. Fairer minds have to prevail. Uh, strong people have to emerge. And, and we're heading into some difficult, hard, hard times. Uh, I don't know anymore. I don't, you know, I don't know is, is you know, are, are we trying to, is our government truly at odds with us? I, I mean, I tend to look at the results and I think, yeah, they are. They're not after our best interests. Um, uh, when I have a president who, within the first 30 seconds of his State of the Union, focuses more on Ukraine than he does the American people, uh, when, when you have a president who jumps on an airplane and flies to New York for a campaign event with two former, um, two former presidents, and, and they don't even care about a slain New York police officer's wake that's happening at the same time, that tells me that they have totally lost the values of the American people. Um, and as I said earlier, presidents that are trying to get reelected or politicians that are trying to get reelected, um, they don't do the things that this guy's doing unless they know the fix is in. 
and they believe the fix is in. Uh, you you don't you don't piss off uh, seventy five percent of the American population if you want to get reelected. Um, you either know the fix is in, or you don't care, or you don't plan to run. And it, it seems, by all intents and purposes, they're running this guy. And I don't know what's going to happen in the days ahead. But you certainly don't name a transgender day of visibility uh, on Easter weekend, on Easter Sunday. Uh, you, you don't continue to prop up the the fractional part of statistical non-existent pieces of society that run completely opposite from the way most Americans live and value. So here we are. What do we do? I'm telling you, speak up, speak up, speak out. You say, well, I don't really have a platform or a voice. Support the ones that do. And let me tell you, when they stop representing or speaking or you think they're sold out to something, then don't elevate them anymore. A guy like Damani Felder, he's in this thing. You know, he, he doesn't have anything to gain uh, by putting himself out there and sacrificing the way he does. Yeah, I know you guys think that we get out here and we talk on camera or, or record our voices and, you know, money just falls out of heaven. It doesn't. The sacrifices that have been made are huge because when you absorb truth, truth has truth makes demands on your life. There's consequences to absorbing truth. When you think critically, you, you want to express that. You want to get it out. And you know the world's going to hate it. But, you know, Jesus told us they would. They'd hate us. So here we are. Here we are. All right, guys. Uh, follow at the Damani Felder on Instagram, on Twitter, all the other places. The Wright Brothers on uh, on on YouTube, Rumble, all those places. Follow him on his live feed. Uh, he does a live feed on Facebook. Uh, I think at 8 o'clock every Tuesday night. Check him out. Check him out. He is worth the investment of your time and your mind. Okay? Uh, watch Chad.com for all the fun stuff is. Get my single famous again. Um, follow me down the road. Keep following this show. We're going to keep bringing you some voices. We got, we got some great folks lined up to come in here. And I'm excited. I'm excited about it because I think that God is expanding our, our tent stakes around here and we're reaching a broader audience. And it's, to me, that's pretty cool. So I love you. Couldn't do any of this stuff without you. So I'm thankful for you. And I appreciate you, Shy. I appreciate you, too. Um, I, I, I don't even know what button to push over there, buddy. So we would be dead in the water if it wasn't for Shy making this thing happen. So I love you guys. And uh, God bless you. And we will talk to you next time.